Mango Math presents Tic-Tac-Toe, a fourth grade game. Tic-Tac-Toe is a fourth grade game that falls under the math strand of algebraic thinking. And it's an algebraic thinking game that has students finding all the fac factor pairs for a whole number in the range of 1 to 100. And recognizing that a whole number is a, is a multiple of each of its factors. Some math terms to increase understanding would be multiplier, which is the first number in a multiplication problem. Multiplica multiplicant, <laughs> I can't say it, is the second number in a multiplication problem. And the product or multiple is the answer of a multiplication problem. And a factor is a whole number that multiplies with another number to make a third number. The supplies for this game is a tic-tac-toe game board, some bicolored counters, and some clear transparent counters. To play this game, students will start with the board in front of them. And the object of the game is that they want to create a row that is four counters of their color in a row, horizontally, diagonally, or vertically. So we want the students to use the number line below them to mark two factors that will create a multiple that they'll cover on the board. So for example, we have two clear counters and we are going to place them, the first player, sir, player can place them anywhere on the bottom of that number line that they want. And in this case, they're going to place it on the three and the six. So those are your factors, 3 and 6, and 3 times 6 is 18, so they're going to cover up the 18 on their board. Now the next player gets to move, but here comes the trick. He can only move one of the two clear counters on the number line on the bottom. So he can either stick with the 3 and multiply everything times the 3, or he can stick with the 6 and multiply everything by the 6. So he's also looking at the boards wide open, so he can place his counter anywhere he wants on the board. So let's move one of the two counters and see what we can create. So we're going to move the 3 to the 5, and we're going to have 5 times 3 is 30, so we're going to cover up the 30. So now it's back to the red player's turn and he's got a 5 and a 6, so he's going to think to himself, what are the numbers that I want to cover? And so they're going to look and say, okay, I can cover anything from the 3, the 9, the 28, and 24, and get 4 in a row that way. Or I can look at and cover the 15, 16, 20, and 21 for a horizontal line. Or I can look at for a diagonal line and cover anything that's a 36, 27, 10, or 5. So I've got to look at the numbers that I've been giving, 5 and 6, and figure out what can I what can I make if I move one of those two uh, counters. So what multiple can I make? So let's say I move the 6 to the 3 and I have 3 times 5, which equals 15, and I'm going to cover up that 5. So now I can start working on that row that is highlighted there. So I would have to try to get a 16 or a 20 on my next turn. Now it's the yellow player's turn. And they have the 3 and the 5, so they're going to think, what can I cover? It's either a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 5. And let's say they move the 4 over to the 5, and they get 20. So they're going to cover up that 20, which also also blocks that player from getting four, the red player from getting four in a row, because now they cannot get the four in a row. So they're being a little strategic in their thinking and how they're placing the numbers. Now it's the red player's turn again. And let's say they've been going for a while, and you can see on the board that we have a few options to get four in a row. The red player can try to get that 36 and get a diagonal off of covering up the 36. The yellow player can try to cover that 32 
to try to get their four in a row. So they have some options, but they have a two and an eight. So the player whose turn it is will have to figure out, can I move, can I get a 36 or a 32 with the numbers that I have covered currently? So to do that, you can see that I can do 8 times 8, which gives me 64. So this person's got a completely different direction and is covering up the 64. And now he's going to try to work on, he's got two options now on creating four in a row. Now notice there was a 32, which was a multiple, 8 was a multiple, was a factor of 32, and 32 is an 8 uh, times 4 would get you 32, so they could have covered that one up, but obviously they missed it. So now it is the red player's turn, and he's got the two 8s. And he's trying to think, can he cover the 5 or can he cover the 36 with the 8s? He's going to move one of them, and he gets 4 times 8. And he's going to block. Oh, it was the yellow person's turn again. And so he's got 4 in a row. If this had been the red person's turn, he could have blocked that spot by covering it up with a red marker. So there's a lot of strategic thinking in this game. It's one of my favorite games. It's just a brilliant game on getting kids to think about numbers and their relationships and that their factors and their multiples. So some guided questions to promote some critical thinking would be, were there any numbers that were good numbers to cover up first? Was there any strategies on what numbers to cover up first? Were there any numbers that were harder to cover than other numbers? And what strategic thinking did you have to do in order to win the game? Were you playing more offensively, defensively? Were you trying to block the other player? Um, were you even thinking about the other player while you while you were playing? A lot of the young ones just are working on their row of four that they don't even pay attention to what the other player is doing. So you'll notice that as you're playing along with the kids. So enjoy.